I you. What website are you watching this on right now? Myvid.ni. How do you even get a .ni website URL? Now, obviously, if you're watching this video by illegal means instead of actually on YouTube, instead of giving me the view and the ad money, I'd be a little bit upset. Let's say I was charging you £10 to watch this video, but you could watch it somewhere else for free. The first thing I'm not going to do is raise the price of watching my video to £15. I don't think anyone would do that. Surely now, if I've raised the price to £15, 15 pounds more and more people are gonna say hold on a second I need to check out my vid.ni. I can be unhappy that I'm losing out on a view But increasing the prices even more doesn't seem all that intelligent And that's where we are with watching football in England right now because it's time to talk about illegal football streaming FBI are gonna be at my door within 63 seconds minimum <laughs> So I want to preface this video by saying I do have a TV license and the only thing being used without permission in this household is my anterior cruciate ligament. The doctor said I shouldn't be walking anywhere. But a lot of people across the country are going to be having concerns after a recent crackdown where the Premier League and lawmakers around copyright in the country and in terms of sport too are wanting to send people to jail just for watching illegal streams in their own homes, not even distributing them. Under this new warning, if a person is found to be, you know, illegally streaming a game in their home, they can end up with a 12 month prison sentence or in more serious cases up to five years in jail allegedly now got it here prior to the 2024-25 season the federation against copyright theft which is fact uk confirmed that it would be clamping down on those planning to use fire sticks to illegally stream football and other sports this obviously isn't just a problem in in football but across the entire spectrum of sporting activity and if someone is using a jailbroken fire stick they're infringing copyright by viewing content without paying the appropriate license license fee apparently. Maybe one extra fact that Fat UK may want to focus on is the price that we have to pay to actually watch football these days. We'll get into the pricing and stuff in a second yeah but some innocent people myself included may not own a, a, a jailbroken fire stick all right. For the interest of the legal system I have a Sky subscription or a Now TV subscription yeah I don't own a jailbroken fire stick. I'm old in it. Jailbreaking to me means that I've got a next version of Fruit Ninja that has grapefruits in it as well. But what I would say is, I would understand people that do. Ah uh, yeah, what are you in here for, boss? Yeah, listen, you know Newport County yet? Eight years in prison for streaming Huddersfield Town versus Derby County and Phil Schofield gets a TV show on an island. Are you taking a piss? That has nothing to do with me. Recently, two brothers who were distributing, I guess, copyrighted content or distributing Premier League games to be watched on streaming services were sentenced to a combined 11 years in prison. That was back in August after a previous crackdown on IPTV or whatever it is services. Meanwhile, a man in Greece was sentenced to eight years in prison on his own for a slightly more serious case. For what it's worth, if I got sent to prison for watching Ipswich versus Leicester on my laptop, I would probably kill myself. I'm not going to lie. People are going to be attempting prison break, trying to get out of jail after watching Bristol City versus QPR on Total Sportec at 3 p.m. on a Saturday. Best believe you'll have to keep an eye out when an unmarked black car drives past your window as you press on the Hansa Rostock versus Kaiserslautern. It's already bad enough being a Manchester United fan, watching a game getting 7 0 peppered at home by Liverpool, without then the risk of getting put behind bars afterwards. Actually, to be honest, it's probably better for them to just be in jail rather than watch the games. Get me arrested! Open the door, open the door, let's go. TV companies should be paying me for having to listen to Michael Owen and Steve McManaman on TNT Sports. When they don't score, they hardly have a winner. Not the other way around. This is ludicrous. My hard earned cash, my wage. For someone to tell me that if you keep a clean sheet, you're unlikely to lose. That should be the punishment, I've just realised. Forget about financial compensation going to jail. If you are illegally streaming a football match and you get caught, Michael Owen has to go round to your house and audio describe the next game to you. No one's doing it after that, I'll tell you that for free. And speaking of pundits, Rio Ferdinand will at least be impressed when he sees one fan have four streams open at the same time during the final game week of the Champions League group stages. Ballando, Ballando. Five years for watching 
I don't know, camel racing. You've got actual criminals roaming free. Politicians, for example. It's actually ludicrous. And you know what it is as well? People are honestly being scammed when they're paying to watch it legitimately as well. Myself included, right? But in a cost of living crisis, okay? It costs £22 per month just to have Sky Sports. As far as football is concerned, that's pretty much exclusively the Premier League and EFL. There's obviously a lot of other sports that Sky broadcast as well. You know, Formula One. There's a lot of tennis, golf, rugby, carp fishing. But it's not just £22 a month because you actually have to have Sky in order to, to have Sky Sports. So Sky TV as a whole, whether that be through broadband or whether it just be the Sky TV package, which is at least £20. It kind of varies. The prices here are going to vary quite a bit because it does depend on the package. But for the most part, I'm choosing the lowest possible that you could get here. So just bear in mind that the prices that I'm actually quoting could be even higher than what they are in this video. So that's £42 straight off the bat, just so you can watch games that are actually viewable on Sky Sports. Now TV is also an option, so you can watch it when you're away from your TV, but that's even more of a scam. I mean, I've seen people complaining about having very low rates, you know, in terms of compared to other ones, being £51 per month or something like that. So £51 for Sky as a whole, but then being hyped for no reason whatsoever by like 10, 15, maybe even £20 per month to get the exact same deal as you had before. And that's not even including broadband or anything. That is just purely to watch Sky on your TV. So Sky channels or just Sky Sports, that's it. Not even movies or anything else. Now, £61 a year, which again is pretty low given all the other calculations I've done, is like £730 a year. Again, maybe not too crazy when you compare it to other bills that you could have to pay during a year, like rent or your electricity or your heating bills or whatever. But that is just for Sky Sports. Again, it doesn't necessarily include other actual Sky channels. It doesn't include a movies package. And not only is that like just one element of Sky viewing, it's also not great value for money anyway. Sky Sports only show Saturday Night Football, Super Sunday, and Monday Night Football. So realistically, on average, you're paying all of that for three or four at best games in a week. Not necessarily an actual full week. I mean, a game, a match week of, of football. They don't own the rights to the Champions League. They don't ever have the early kickoff on a Saturday. And obviously nobody has the rights to 3 p.m. kickoff games on a Saturday because of the 3 p.m. blackout, which is yet another issue. And I understand the premise behind the, the 3 p.m. blackout. The idea is because you don't want fans to be able to watch every single game possible because they then won't turn up to games. They won't go and watch a game in person. But for me, I think that's just, I think that's a cop out, to be honest with you. You go to a game for a very different reason than you watch a game. If you want to watch a game with your friends at the pub, that's completely different to actually going and having a day out and going and watching a match yourself. I don't know many people that would go, actually, I can't be asked to go and watch the game today because I could just watch it in front of my TV. They're very different experiences that you don't just settle, like you don't settle on watching a game when you've got yourself hyped up to go into a match for the entire week. It's just stupid. And not only that, we're the only country in the world where you can't watch English games at 3 p.m. You can watch 3 p.m. kickoffs in America, in Canada, probably in Venezuela if you really wanted to, but you can't watch them here. Like, it's actually insane. That's another reason why fans feel like they have to illegally stream games. Because if for whatever reason they can't go to a game, if they don't happen to live in the same city as the club that they support, or they're busy doing something else, that's it. They can't watch the game. They have no means of watching the game until match of the day at 11 p.m. Now that wasn't a problem back in the day when people used to be fine to do that because the prices of actually watching the games wasn't so high in the first place. You didn't have to pay a grand a year just to be able to watch three games on Sky Sports Live. Objectively, it's not good value for money. You're paying all of that just to miss out on all of the 3 p.m. kickoffs. If you support a team in the bottom half of the Premier League, you might genuinely get broadcasted live on Sky Sports seven times a year. Between seven and ten. That's not worth the amount of money that you'd be paying. It just simply isn't. And not only that, that is just Sky Sports. We won't talk about Amazon Prime or Prime Video too much because they don't show that many games. I think it's like four games a year. And also the price of Amazon Prime isn't that crazy. It's only $8.99 a month. Plus, it's, there's other reasons why you'd have Prime. But TNT Sports, for example, is purely subscription based so that you can watch it on the TV. That is an extra £25 a month just to get the early kickoff for the Premier League and then the Champions League and European stuff too. Obviously, I think they've got French rights as well, like League on. But generally speaking, as an English football fan, all right, you have to have an entire Sky package that can fluctuate all over the gaff dependent on what they fancy charging you for the year. And then also TNT Sports on top of that as well. To still only get to see about half of the matches that actually happen in the Premier League during a game 
game week. And look, I'm not telling people to go out and illegally stream matches. That would obviously be stupid. But what I am highlighting really more than anything is that it just simply isn't good value for money. This is more just a plea to the TV channels to actually make things more accessible to the, to the Premier League, to make actually watching games more affordable. They probably lose millions a year based on the amount of people that are watching games for free illegally online. They wouldn't lose as much money on that grander scale if they dropped the prices of TV subscriptions just a little bit. Because if Sky Sports and TNT Sports were just a little bit more affordable and a little bit more accessible without needing to apply a crazy amount of extras just to be able to put about seven channels on your TV, nowhere near as many people would feel the need to do this, to seek out games for free and illegally stream. Because the illegal streaming has its own problems as well. You cannot go more than six minutes without one crash. Allegedly. The quality obviously isn't going to be as good as you watching it on the TV. It's not going to be as instant. What you see on the TV is the live feed. What you would watch on an illegal stream might be two, three minutes behind. There are genuine reasons why you would watch it on the TV, obviously, instead of illegally streaming it. But to a lot of people, in a time where money is extremely tight, that just simply isn't worth it. And it is worth the risk because according to a poll conducted across football fans, generally speaking, one in ten Britons admitted to using illicit means to view sports events generally and that's just the ones that are admitting to it okay not many people are probably going to admit in a poll like that that they actually do illegally stream any type of sports and i fear that number's only going to go up if the prices of the subscription fees for tv companies continue to go up as well see this video as more constructive criticism okay it's not like a call to action for everybody to start boycotting you know like tv companies and start illegally watching i don't want people to get into trouble but overall football is just not good value for money in the UK. It actually isn't. If you lived in America, you simply would get better value for money. And the games aren't even happening in America. They're happening right here. People are getting scammed. I'm going to be honest with you to watch less than 50% of the games that happen in a week to be getting charged that much and for it to be as inaccessible as it actually is, is a crime in itself. As I said, should people be distributing illegal streams? Obviously not. But should people also be expected to pay as much as they are right now to not even see half of the action in a Premier League week? Also no. It's obvious scaremongering, and that's why it's even more pathetic, really, as well. Like, quotes like this. I saw, like, obviously, Sport Bible have been tweeting about it quite a lot, and it's just been in the news, generally speaking. So what do you guys think of this? Who do you support, and is it good value for money for you? Let me know down in the comments section below. But it's something that needs to be talked about, because I always see it from the perspective of, yeah, someone who distributed Fulham versus Coventry City went to jail for four years. But the TV companies and broadcasters do need to be held accountable as well for driving people to do this more and more more frequently. If you did enjoy this video though, feel free to slap a like on it and of course subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta and you can become a channel member if you really enjoy the content. It really does help me out. Would massively appreciate it if you do choose to do so. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and please stop watching me on myvid.ne man. Go to the, the YouTube. It's free on the, on the YouTube channel. <laughs>